So a warm welcome to all. So we know uh, we somewhat finished almost all our uh, topics, especially the families, and we started a monocotyledon family and completed up to the last family Comlinaceae. Now we can move on to a special group of families. According to Bentham and Hooker, this group of families included in the series Cytamine. Okay, and later by various scientists and also our latest APJ system, this is not you cannot see this the term Cytamine. Okay, so Cytamine is included a four important families. They are the four subtropical families, and they have the peculiar feature is that most of them having typically one functional stamen. And their ovary is inferior and the vegetative structure leaf is arranged distichously in, in rows, alternate rows, distichous arrangement and flowers are zygomorphic. So this family, uh, group of family are very, very important and they are, uh, uh, we are studying among them the heading cytamine. Okay, it include four tropical and subtropical families. So let us check what are they. They are Musaceae, Zingiberaceae, Cannaceae and Marantaceae. What are they? Musaceae, Zingiberaceae, Cannaceae and Marantaceae. Okay. Or from this, uh, the Zingiberaceae you have studied, already studied in your UG classes. So, let us discuss one by one the families of Cytamine. So, before that, I am here representing the latest version, a cladogram proposed by the uh, Cruss and their team, the scientists Cruz and their team in 2001, uh, the, uh, the display of uh, the elite members coming under Zingiberales, clear. So here they are included into two groups, bananas and Zingibers. See, the bananas, the group include Musaceae, uh, then Strelitzaceae, Lowiaceae and Heliconiaceae, clear. And in the ginger families, they can see, you can see Costaceae, Zingiberaceae, Cannaceae and Marantaceae, clear. So, what is we are going to study is the four families, but that is not arranged like this. So, later uh, uh, due to this many phylogenetic relationship and also character similarities and all, uh, they studied in detail and they delineated them into different groups. So, now what we are going to study among, under Musaceae is the uh, Strelitzaceae and Heliconiaceae in Musaceae. And Costaceae we are going to study in Zingiberaceae. Clear? So, now it is uh, like this. Clear? Okay. Now, uh, this is the diagrammatic sketch that, uh, that we have in the last slide what we show. It is a diagrammatic sketch is here. See Musaceae uh, and its allied genera Strelitzaceae. So, these all three are now in one group and uh, we are going to study in the Cytamine but now it is like this. Clear? And Heliconiaceae is also separated. Then uh, Zingiberaceae usually having Zingiberaceae and Costaceae two branches. Then Cannaceae and Marantaceae. Clear? So this is the latest version actually by according to Cross et al. in 2001. Clear? Now we can start our Cytamine families. The first one is Cannaceae. So Canna is a very common plant uh, in our areas. So it is uh, this family is known as Canna lily family. Canna lily is the common uh, Thotavara in Malayalam. Canna. Uh, it has a single genus that is Canna and um, about uh, uh, thousands of species are occurring all over the world and its distribution is it is in warm American tropics and also most of them are perennial herbs. So Canna is the only genus. The system is rhizomatous, underground rhizomatous. Most of all these four uh, families having somewhat the same feature, rhizomatous condition and sympodial growth. Okay. Then leaves are distichous. What do you mean by distichous nature of leaves? Uh, means uh, the distichous nature and having uh, the opposite, spirally alternately arranged condition and also sheathing uh, base, leaf bases are also very prominent. Clear? Yeah. See, this is a uh, structure, the leaves arrangement, you know, sheathing condition and uh, distichous arrangement, uh, spiral or distichous arrangement and uh, petiolate leaves and petioles are simple and penny parallel veined. Vein, venation is there in the petiole. The venation is also very important. You can see the prominent midrib in these families. Okay. See, this is the rhizomatous condition, underground rhizome from which the aerial parts arises. This is the means of vegetative propagation also. 
Now, looking onto the inflorescence, you can see they are bracteate thyrses. Usually bracteate, a spike or a raceme uh, or cymose inflorescence. Bracts are prominent. See like this, bracteate flowers and clusters of flowers uh, occur in that uh, particular type of inflorescence. Usually bracteate flowers in spike inflorescence. And looking into the flowers, they are brightly colored flowers and flowers are bisexual and zygomorphic. And also epigynous. Most of all the families, these four families having epigynous condition and zygomorphic condition. That's a typical feature of cytamine. Eh? And flowers are bisexual. Okay. See uh, the bracts very, uh, very colorful, the thick, fleshy bracts present in the lower portions from only from its axils. Actually, the flowers arrange. Different colors of canna available. Now looking into the perianth. Usually biseriate and uh, homoclamidus, somewhat same color. That is 3 plus 3 arrangement. These are the outer tepals and these are the inner tepals. You know, don't confuse this as the colored portion as our perianth. So, uh, just below this colored uh, petal like structure, you can see two important parts. One is outer tepal 3 and this is the inner tepal 3. So, just take a canna flower and look into, into detail. Okay. And they are apotepalous condition. Okay. Now, looking into the andrisium, stamens, I already told you the feature of the series itamine, only one fertile stamen. Here also it is. That is a median posterior position, that fertile stamen. And all others are modified into staminodes. That fertile stam stamen is petaloid. That is a petaloid stamen. Very important point. You have to study this in the case of canne, cannesia, the see. The stamens are uh, the stamens are only one fertile and median posterior position and a fertile stamen is petaloid. Clear? So they are petaloid stamens. See, this is the uh, petaloid condition stamens, petaloid staminodes four and one fertile stamen. And uh, this is a staminodes usually uh, one, four or five, large petaloid one. That is a very important one. Stamin the staminodes or the, they are the large petaloid one that bear the fertile stamen. I will show you the diagram. See, this is the petaloid fertile stamens and it contain the petaloid portion contain the stamen. Okay. And style is also laminar. All parts are petaloid or laminar in appearance. Then the anther is positioned on the petaloid stamen. Anther is positioned on the petaloid stamen. Okay. Dehiscence is longitudinal. See, this is the monothecal anther. I will show the diagram. See, it is very clear. So, this is the petaloid uh, stamen. So, petaloid stamen and anther attached on the petaloid portion. So, this is the way they are arranged. So, all the stamens except one that is fertile. Others are petaloid. Arranged like petaloids. Clear? That is very very important uh, feature of the family. So, we already discussed where it is tepals are outside 3 plus 3 already there. These colored portions are all the stamens. They are modified stamens. Only one stamen is fertile. All others are staminodes. They are petaloid. Okay. Now, looking into the gynecium, you can see syncarpus. Inferior ovary with three carpels. Clear? Syncarpus, inferior three carpel. Epigynous we already told. And also style is terminal and laminar. Style is also laminar. Clear? That petal shaped style. And a blade like a flat structure style. Axial placentation is present. Uh, numerous carpal, uh, numerous uh, ovules present inside this uh, ovary. And seeds are arillate. Sorry, X arillate. Usually most of these families having arillate seeds. But here it is X arillate seeds. See, this is the gynecium, uh, the portion, uh, see, it is inferior in condition. When you cut open, you can see the ovules arranged. Okay. Now, looking into the economic importance, you can see this family include only the ornamental cultivars. Canna species, various types are there, ornamental cultivars. And one species, Canna edulis, that is uh, used as a source of starch. It is a rhizome yield starch. So, this is the canna uh, lily, our common species, canna indica, different varieties are available. And this is the canna edulis, second one. This is the canna edulis and this is canna indica or canna lily, different varieties available, different colors available. Okay, this is a very common occurrence. So, 
So Candice while discussing only one fertile stamen present and that fertile stamen is where it is located the fertile anther on the petaloid stamens clear and 3 plus 3 tepals that is also uh, thin linear but the stamen modified structures they are the petaloid ones they are the attractive ones style is also uh, laminar leaf like style that is colored styles ok where gynesium with uh, that is epigynous uh, inferior and also with the tricapillary condition, axial placentation. So, this is about uh, Canesia and only one genera, Canna and many species. Some are ornamental, some are edible. This That is all about the family Canesia uh, and uh, they are distinguished from other families. How you can distinguish it from other families? Disticus leaves and flower with one petaloid monothecal stamen, only one stamen and associated petaloid staminodes also. Then 3 plus 3 arrangement, petaloid stamin, inferior ovary and trilocular tricapillary condition. Clear? So, see this flora diagram, it is very clear. Uh, while for the examination, you can draw this. See, outer 3 tepal and inner 3, 1, 2 and 3, inner 3 tepal. And see, this is the outer 1 uh, and Two and three petaloid staminodes and that is out of five. The five is present. One is completely absent. One is completely absent or inconspicuous. And out of the five, one is the uh, petaloid median posterior containing the anther. One containing the anther. Others are all petaloid staminodes. So out of five, four are petaloid staminodes and one is petaloid stamen. That is the difference. Others are petaloid staminodes and one is petaloid stamen. The petaloid stamen contain the fertile anther attached. Then gynecial tricapillary, trilocular uh, at the present with the center. So this is all about the flora diagram. So you have to draw this diagram by discussing the family candesia. This diagrammatic representation. Okay. So that is all for uh, today about candesia. So have a nice day. Thank you.